Okay. Should be recording now. Yep. Okay, good. So anyway, thank you all for joining us. Um, this uh, I'm on the homepage of this website where this, uh, this, the woman's uh, tour lives. It's called atl2020.net. So again, my, my, name, my name is Steve Sines. I, I started doing walking tours about six years ago in Atlanta. I've done a lot, hundreds of them. I was a Beltline tour guide for a couple of years. So I got to know the whole Atlanta Beltline project. And one of the things I learned very early in when I started doing these tours, and even to this day, people say every time I do a tour, and these are mostly walking tours, by the way, people come up to me and say, you know, I've been living here all my life. I never saw that before, or I never knew that was was there. Or even more often, they say, I've driven by this a thousand times. I never knew that, or I never saw that before. And of course, what that taught me was that, you know, when you walk around the city, when you walk through the city, you, you experience the city in a very different way. You get to see things that you can't possibly see any other way. And you learn things about the city that you don't learn. I've been here 35 years, uh, mostly in the close in suburbs. So it wasn't until about six years ago that I moved in town and really started exploring the city itself. I didn't know Atlanta, to be honest with you. Uh, I did a lot of traveling. I think I knew my way around Atlanta and Chicago better than I did uh, a Atlanta, for sure. Uh, New York, Chicago, even San Francisco. Uh, so when I moved in town, I started walking around. And I started discovering that there's really a lot of really cool stuff to see. So this project that you're looking at, ATL 2020, um, I started in January 1st. And my, my goal here, my, my objective, as you can see right on the front screen here, is uh, to help people really celebrate and connect with Atlanta's past, present, and future. So I've been creating a series of projects. Some of them are actual tours. You can see three of them right here on the front. The Freedom Trail Tour, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Peachtree Street Tour, which is a lot of fun. In fact, that photograph on the, on the homepage of this website is from, uh, I believe that's the, the January 1st. I did a New Year's Day hike. Uh, the three mile hike and when I, where I kicked off that Peachtree Street tour. That's a lot of fun. But the one we're gonna talk about today is called the Women of Distinction. And I did this in honor of Women's Month, which of course is March. And I came up with this idea of honoring or celebrating 20 women for 2020 who made what I call a lasting impression on Atlanta. So, you know, you could, it's kind of hard to, to choose just 20 women. But what I tried to do here, and here are, are the women here. So by the way, you clicked on that page, and this is what I call the tour index page. What I'm gonna do with this 30 minutes or so that I have is kind of walk you through what I think are maybe some of the subtle things, the nuances of this project um, that maybe you, 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 you might miss. So I'm, I'm gonna try to help you, uh, you know, kind of take advantage of this and, and so you can see all the resources that are here. And then you know, you'll have to go through the tour yourself to really, take in the information. There's a lot of content here. So that's my goal for today is just to help you understand how to take full advantage of this, of this tour. But anyway, so this tour uh, index here has all of the women listed on it. So I've got them listed a couple of different ways. The photographs here of the 20 women are, um, they're listed by their birth year. Okay, so by, by when they were born. And then down below at the bottom of the page, I have them listed in alphabetical order by last name. And then I've, I've come up with sort of a, a, a headline for each woman. Here's the, the, the thread that holds all of this together and that, 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 that all of these women have in common. And this gets back to my walking tours. There's something in Atlanta, some physical, it could be a historical marker, it could be a grave site, it could be a monument, uh, or it could be even uh, a name of a street that was named after them. But there's something in Atlanta that you can go to physically and connect with these women. That's the, that's the common thread. So there's 20 of them. Um, I, I learned a lot. Uh, some of these women are, are a little obscure. Unless you're an absolute history buff, there's going to be some names here you won't recognize. So what I'm going to do, again, I'll walk you through what's on this website um, if you hover over these uh, images here, it kind of it brings up that that headline here. So I'm going to start with uh, just go to the first one here, um, who's I, I think a fa and I actually stumbled across this woman, Nancy Morgan Hart, uh, by doing a tour. Um, and the connecting point for her is a place called Liberty Plaza, which is by the Capitol, the Georgia State Capitol. And even Liberty Plaza, maybe people have heard of it, but 99% of the people I talked to have never even been there much less heard of Nancy Hart. 
So uh, you can see the birth year, 1735. She lived from 1735 to 1830. She's a, uh, the oldest of the women. But let me, I'm going to take a couple minutes and walk you through the structure of the page, right? So you can see what's in here. It took me several weeks to pull all this together. There's a lot of content in here. And I'm hoping you all, if you, if you like this, if you, if you think it's valuable, I hope you will help me spread the word uh, so that other people can enjoy it and take advantage of it as well. So at the top of the page, you're going to have a sort of a brief summary of this woman's life and what she's known for. Uh, it's kind of a biography. Uh, I, I thought this was really uh, kind of kind of uh, interesting and curious about the fact that she was known for uh, um, sort of uh, as a patriot. Uh, you can see right here, a devout patriot heart gained notoriety during the Revolutionary War for her determined effort to get rid of the, the English soldiers and, and British sympathizers. And there's a great story about uh, these guys uh, sort of breaking into her home and she she tricked them by by giving them uh, it, there's a picture right here in the in the uh, in the gallery here of uh she served the his, here's the story right here according to revolutionary lore nancy hart famously outwitted a group of tories who had invaded her home she served them wine and once they were drunk took their weapons which she then used to shoot two of them and held the rest captive until help arrived i don't know if that's true but it's a great story so there there's stuff like that there's this it's just i find it just fascinating um, to, to get the stories. And all 20 of them have uh, a story like this, not, maybe not quite as colorful as this, but Aunt Nancy, as they called her, uh, was, was quite a character. So then below the, the summary, you have some images, um, uh, just uh, images that I found. This is how I learned about her. This image over here on the far right is the marker. This is the plate. This is the connection to Nancy Hart in Atlanta. It's called War Woman. This is a huge plaque. This thing is probably three feet wide, maybe two and a half feet tall. And this is in Liberty Plaza. And I literally stumbled across this. I read it. I was kind of blown away by the story. And I thought, what a cool story. 99.9% .9 of the people have never heard of Nancy Hart, much less seen this plaque. So that's, that's, that's the, the goal here is to help people connect. Um, if I could find a video about the, the woman, I, I've got the video on here. So there's some really interesting videos. Uh, this is a video that was done in her honor, I think, by a PBS station. And then as you keep scrolling down on the page, you'll see this, this section called How and Where to Connect, right? And I've got very specific directions on how to get to this specific location. Um, in most cases, I've got, uh, I've included a, uh, this is a Google street map view that shows that's actually the entrance to Liberty Plaza right there, right, uh, right there where my mouse is pointed, where those flags are. Uh, again, the Capitol, scroll over here. Yeah, the Capitol is right here to the left. Anyway, if you walk right through that gate, about 50 feet through that gate on the left is that, is that plaque, that marker of hers. So it kind of shows people how to get there. And then the last section in the page is uh, the, these three items getting there, which is very specific, like, you know, almost GPS type instructions, how to get to the location. And then I've got a section called don't miss, which is if you're in that area, here's some things around there. Uh, it could be uh, historical markers. It could be other uh, monuments or even buildings that you should see if you're there. And then I've got a section called learn more for people that want to drill down and I've got links to other websites that uh, have more information about Nancy. So, and here's an example of the specific instructions. Uh, I, try, I encourage people to try to take MARTA to get around town. So if you can take MARTA, in this case, this is a two block walk from the Georgia MARTA station. If you click on the link that says two block walk, you get the Google map and there's the walk right there. Okay, so um, anyway, that is um, here. That. Uh, kind of got stuck in my windows there. Anyway, so all 20 women have a page just like that. In terms of navigating through this virtual tour, uh, the heart at the very top of each page will take you back to the index page where all 20 women are listed. Uh, so um, let's see what else I've got here. As you can see here, I've got a couple different things there. 
Uh, okay, let me spend a little time on the interactive map because that is a, I think that's a real handy tool. I created a map um, showing the location of the 20 uh, women and here's the map right here. Uh, so there's a couple things. This map right here is embedded in this, in this web page right there. So if you click over here on the upper left, this is for the legend. So this, what this does is it reveals the legend for this map. And what you can see here, there's a, a description at the top. Here's the 20 women. Those are the, noted by the little hearts. And you can see them all distributed here around town. A lot of them are downtown, a few out west of town, and so forth. And then what I did here on the map itself is I created a series of doors. So you, it, it, it'd be very difficult to get to all 20 by foot because they're spread out so much. So I created a couple of different tours. Here's walking tour A, that's two miles. That's, and by the way, if, I don't know if you've used these Google Maps, if you uncheck these boxes, it, it basically turns, these are called filters, it turns them on and off. So there's all 20 women right there listed on the, on the website, uh, on the map. And then if I wanna say, all right, I wanna do a driving tour, there's two driving tours, here's the driving tour, and there you go. And you can literally go from one place to the other. If you click on one of the hearts, if you click on one of the icons, it brings up information uh, about the, the woman, uh, the, the, the connection point, and then here's a link back to the website that we're on right now, which is the virtual tour. So, um, and by the way, you can open that map in a separate window, just click on the full page here, and uh, that map you can use when you're out in the field. All right, let me see, we'll go back to the index. Uh, by the way, at the bottom of each page, I've created a couple of ways to get around as well. So the index takes you back to that index page that I meant. The map link takes you back to this page we're on right now. And this next button is the way you navigate through the virtual tour. So you can literally just go from one page to the other. So let me go back to the, um, to the main page here and kind of walk you through. I'll point out some of the, the women that I think are, are really kind of interesting and, and maybe kind of off the beaten path. Uh, for those of you that that uh, that like to do like to get off the beaten path, so let's let's scroll down here to the names here. There, there are twenty women all together. I think four of them are still living. So um, there's a few people that I that I that I wanted to honor because uh, I think they've done some extraordinary work here in the city. But I think uh, you, you'll get a chance to know them. And but most of these women have passed on. But let me kind of kind of walk through here and kind of give you a little uh, color for who's here. So Barbara Asher, uh, or sorry, Barbara Miller Asher, some of you may know her. She's a relatively recent uh, woman of distinction. She was a council member. Uh, they called her a tireless public servant. There is a beautiful monument. It's, a, it's actually a sculpture, about a full, it's, a, it's almost a life-size statue of her reading the newspaper. And this statue is in the middle of Marietta Street in downtown. You, you know, you, you can only get there by walking up to it. I mean, you can't stop in the middle of Marietta Street, and it's in the median. Of, it's just an absolutely gorgeous place. And there's something called Barbara Asher Square, which is right there as well. And I'm talking about just a couple of hundred yards uh, west of Five Points, the main intersection of Atlantic, uh, heading up toward uh, the CNN Center. Um, Selena Sloan Butler, uh, a fascinating woman, a, a teacher from Thomasville, Georgia, uh, had a park. There's a park named Selena S. Butler Park that's named after her. Some of you have, may have been by there. It's in the Sweet Auburn area, uh, just south of the Edgewood uh, corridor there. In, uh, and, and there's also, and she's also buried in, in Oakland Cemetery. So I'll go to a couple of the individual pages, but sometimes uh, you have to go to Oakland Cemetery or other cemeteries uh, to connect with these women to, to, to go to their, their, their grave sites. Um, Annie E. Casey is, is one of my, I, I might go back to her if I have time. This is a fascinating story. Annie Casey was a widow from Seattle, and I'll, I'll kind of save the surprise there, but uh, you might ask, how does a, a Seattle uh, widow have an impact on Atlanta? Well, it's pretty extraordinary, the impact. Turns out one of her sons uh, was the founder of UPS, United Parcel Services. Uh, so an incredible, and, and, and this, and this a, Annie E. Casey is a foundation that, that her children started in her honor. And uh, this foundation owns a huge piece of property down in the neighborhood of Pittsburgh, uh, which is in Southwest Atlanta, uh, that they've had for 20 years. And there is a project there called Pittsburgh Yards. It's just coming, really just coming online. Again, it, it's just an incredible story of how a woman from Seattle, a widow, 
has this just extraordinary impact on the city of Atlanta. So Ms. Clayton, Zernona Clayton is still living. Uh, she's a famous broadcaster, civil rights leader. Uh, there is a street in downtown named after her, as well as a plaza. So that is the connecting point. Martha Lumpkin Compton, one of my favorite. You probably have heard that Atlanta was once called Marthasville. Well, this is Martha. This is the, this is the woman who, who, who had the city named after her and the story of her and her, her father, uh, our, our, the governor, uh, was, was pretty fascinating. And I found some really interesting um, newspaper clippings from when she was alive, when she lived in Athens, Georgia, that just makes for some incredible reading. Uh, very, very little information about her, by the way. Mayor Shirley Franklin, you've all heard about her. The place to connect with Mayor Shirley Franklin is at the King Center. She is on what's called the International Walk of Fame. Um, and of course, she's doing a lot of stuff in Atlanta right now, but that is the physical connecting point that I put in the, in the tour. Dorothy Fuqua, I'm sure you've heard of. The connecting point there, you probably can guess, is the Fuqua uh, Conservatory at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens. You know, as I'm going through this and I'm, and I'm thinking about it, one of the cool things about this tour is that it, it, it sort of forces you, if you will, to get out and explore the city and you get to go to places that maybe you wouldn't have gone. I mean, you would have gone to the Atlanta Botanical Gardens, but you may not have gone to the International Walk of Fame, or you may not have gone to the historical uh, Oakland Cemetery to connect with Martha Lumpkin at her gravesite, which is, that's the connecting point for her. Uh, Julia Collier Harris, a, a, an incredible story. Uh, this is the woman that brought Georgia its first Pulitzer Prize in the 1920s. Her, the, by the way, there's another thing I learned about this tour, there's connecting points between these women. The stories begin to connect. So for example, Julia Collier Harris married the son of, of Joel Chandler, Candler Harris, and the connecting point for her is the Wren's Nest in West End that some of you know that Joel Chandler Harris lived in. Her father, this was even more interesting in some respects, her father, Collier, was the first not first, he was the president of something called the Piedmont Exposition. That may ring a bell. That took place in 1887 in Piedmont Park. That went very, very well. This was uh, kind of one of the ways Atlanta was trying to get back on the map after the Civil War. And in 1895, he was the president of another kind of a world's fair that took place called the Cotton States and International Exposition. That was her father. So really interesting woman. Uh, she and her husband, uh, the son of Joel Chandler Harris uh, owned a newspaper, I believe it was out of Columbus, Georgia, and uh, her writings are, I like to say, what, what brought Georgia its first uh, Pulitzer Prize. Number 10, Alice, uh, I had never heard of Alice Hawthorne. Um, she is the woman that was killed in the 1996 Olympic bombing. 44-year-old mother from Albany, Georgia. Her daughter begged her to take her to the Olympics in Atlanta. She acquiesced. She bought tickets for the, for the Olympics, brought her daughter here, and they were in Olympic Park, unfortunately, in the wrong place at the wrong time. She was killed by a piece of shrapnel that, that uh, hit her in the head. And she's the only person that was killed by the bomb itself. There was another individual, I believe he was a journalist, that was killed. Uh, he, he died of a heart attack as he was running, I believe, to the site. There is a beautiful memorial to Alice and the gentleman that died, and, and I think 111 people that were injured, and it is called the Quilt of Remembrance. Uh, let me actually take you there. I, I just discovered this. I, I shot a video there. Uh, I was taken aback because I didn't know anything about this, and I've, I've met other people that have been in Atlanta all their lives, and they didn't know anything about this. So here's the Quilt of Remembrance right here. Uh, there's a picture I took a couple days ago. Uh, you can see there it says Quilt of Remembrance. And it turns out they have, they have built the quilt itself is, let's see. Okay, the quilt itself is over here. And it is, it's really interesting. They took colors of rocks from all of the countries that participated in the Olympics from all over the world to create this, uh, this, this, uh, this memorial, if you will. Uh, here is sort of the cornerstone um, and I've, I've uh, summarized it here, but this is an incredible story. That quilt of remembrance, there's several, they call them quilts. There's a, this, this uh, image, which a lot of people have seen, 
is called the Quilt of Origins. Uh, so there's about three different quilts that honor different things in Centennial Olympic Park. And it turns out right here where my mouse is, is a black kind of a gunpowder flash with a gouge. I actually have a close up of it. That is a piece of the shrapnel from the, uh, from the bomb that went off that was nearby. So again, just these incredible stories, uh, one after another that are in here. So uh, I, I, I honor Alice. Uh, she was uh, born in 1952, just a few years before I was born actually. So let's see what else I got on here. Coretta Scott King, you all know, the connecting point for her is the King Center, which is an incredible facility that most people have heard about, but they haven't actually been in. Um, and of course, her mausoleum is there with Dr. King right there in the reflecting pool. Um, there's three women here that are connected to, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Spelman College. Uh, they are number 12, Harriet Giles, um, number 16, Sophia Packard, and oddly enough, number 19, you'll recognize her middle name, Laura Spellman Rockefeller, okay? All three of these women, the first one, Harriet Giles and Sophia Packard were the co-founders of the seminary, a woman's seminary that, that eventually became known as Spellman College. Uh, these two met, uh, she's from Salem, Massachusetts, as, she, as you met, Packard and, and Giles met uh, in Massachusetts, uh, became partners and founded a series of educational institutions. They ended up in Atlanta and formed uh, this seminary, women's seminary, that turned out to be uh, Spelman College. And each of them, those three women that I just mentioned, all have a hall named after them. This is Packard Hall, there is Giles Hall, and there is uh, Rockefeller Hall. The, the story behind Laura Spellman Rockefeller is kind of interesting. Uh, you can tell from the name, she was the wife of John D. Rockefeller. There's a picture of her right there. Uh, there is uh, John D., her husband. Uh, turns out they ended up donating money to Giles and Packard's uh, seminary school, the women's uh, college, and they named they ended up naming Spellman College after his wife, which was Laura Spellman College. So again, kind of an interesting story there. Just a few more things I want to mention here. Let's see what else I've got here. Um, this is one of my favorite. This is kind of off the beaten path. Number 14, Mary Latimer McClendon, uh, known as the mother of suffrage in Georgia. Uh, the connecting point, there's actually two interesting connecting points for Mary Latimer McClendon. One is at the Georgia State Capitol. There is, here's the picture right here, a, I think, stunning, marble water fountain. This thing stands about four, maybe four and a half feet high. It's up against a wall. It used to be out in the middle of one of the halls there in, in the main entrance there. Uh, this marble fountain was erected in 1923 in her honor. Um, and uh, it is, it is, it's got a sort of an image of her there uh, on the fountain itself. And then her grave site is in the old cemetery, what they call the old cemetery at Decatur Cemetery in Decatur, Georgia. Uh, so a couple places there uh, that you can connect with her. Uh, Dr. Rosalind Pope, one of my favorite stories. Uh, Dr. Pope is still living. This is a, she's a civil rights icon. Uh, there she is right there. And there, she, uh, there, here's, a, here's a better picture of her right there. She wrote something called The Appeal for Human Rights. If you know anything about the Atlanta student movement, uh, you'll know that this is uh, one of the key pieces they wrote. Uh, they, they, these, these students from the uh, Morehouse College and the Clark Atlanta University got together and asked her to write this thing called the Appeal for Human Rights. And the, the, the connecting point for her is this marker, these series of markers, which are there right next to Clark Atlanta University. And there is a street in Atlanta. It's the old Fair Street that was renamed Atlanta Student Movement in their honor. And this, all these, uh, Markers here tell that story. So let's see what else I got here. That was, I thought that was an interesting. Uh, Agnes Irvine Scott is uh, the namesake of, of, of uh, Agnes Scott College. Uh, her father, Mr. Scott, uh, I think it was Colonel Scott, William Scott, is the, the, the town or the, the neighborhood of Scottdale, Georgia, Scott Boulevard. Those are all named after this family. Uh, there's Laura uh, Rockefeller, 
Rockefeller right there, number 20. Miss Youngblood is still living. She is, uh, uh, they call her a cultural crusader. She's been very active in, in preserving all of the homes and buildings in the Sweet Auburn district. So you can go in and, and read about her. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of, let me, let me see if I can go up here and uh, unmute everybody. Uh, that's kind of the gist of it. There's, there are a couple other tools. Uh, I just unmuted. If you guys have any questions, let me know. One other thing I want to show you, I've created a couple of kind of little tools for people. I've, I've been in training and development all my life and, and both of my, both of my parents were educators. So it's kind of in my blood. But I created a pop quiz, a, not pop, a quiz that people can download here. And I, I think it's, it's fun to sort of do a before and after. So this is just a matching quiz. Basically, you've got all the, uh, the women listed below. So it might be fun to download this and see how many of these women you can identify now and then go back and do it after you've taken the tour. Hopefully, you can, you can uh, identify a few more. And then I created this little, another downloadable PDF called a passport. And this is something you can print and actually take into the field with you. So again, these, these are the 20 women, in this case, listed by their birth year. It has the, the location where you go out and connect with them. And I've got a, a provided a little area there where you can take notes. So anyway, that's my story. Uh, what do you guys think? No, I think this is very informative, Steve. I mean, thank you so much for this. I mean, I'm actually excited to kind of go into it and kind of play around and read about um, these women. Um, I just want a quick question. How long did it take you to put all of this together? I tried to estimate that. Some of these, uh, a lot of the time, well, there's two, two parts, two pieces of, of, of time. One is getting the information together. Mm -hmm. The other is formatting these pages. I, I've been building websites for years. So to make it look good, and nowadays, I don't know if you have any experience designing web pages, but you really have to design them uh, for people that, that could, for phones, for, for small devices. Mm -hmm. People view all of this on their phone. And if they're out in the field, they're probably going to be using their smartphone to do this. So you've got to design right. it. It looks good. So I'm going to guess about four to five hours per woman. Oh, wow. I guess. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? All right, you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to join and log in. I really appreciate that. And uh, I'll, I'll probably send out an email after hopefully this, this recording comes out okay. Um, you'll be able to go back and listen to it. But yeah, if you know anybody else that you think might be interested in, in learning about the tour, let them know. Okay, perfect. Thank you again so much. Steve. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.